What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush. Let's talk Jets Radio. We want to thank everybody that joined us yesterday in the live streams. Wild, wild day of chaos with the New York Jets. Obviously, we predicted that Greg Williams would be fired, and lo and behold, today he was. And it really can't surprise you. I mean, the Jets are a laughing stock in the NFL. And at this point, they're just kind of cover their ass and trying to act like they're winning, trying to act like they're holding people accountable. So they fire him. Um, the whole thought process, I mean, this, none of this really is surprising at all. It's also predictable. Um, Adam Gase said he made the decision after consulting Chris Johnson and Joe Douglas. As an organization, they're just trying to save face. I mean, they're looking at it like they're getting ripped up and down. Why did Greg Williams call this? Why did he not call this? The players are shaking their heads just to try to keep any level of accountability in the locker room or respect in the locker room. They had to make this move. So, But if we're being completely honest, which which we do here, is that this has been festering ever since Greg Williams insulted Adam Gase weeks ago in the press conference where he questioned his play calling, mentioned how it's not all the defense's fault, how, why the Jets are losing. So Gase has just been waiting for a time to get this guy fired. Gase loves scapegoats. He loves excuses. He had two of them. He finally had a reason to say, hey, you know what? This isn't this isn't working out. I have to get rid of this guy because, you know, I need, I need somebody else in here. So... I mean, this is, like I said, predictable. I'm not surprised. Good for Greg Williams because you know what? He, he gets, he gets, he's home for the holidays. He's getting paid for it. He can start over and not deal with all this losing and bullshit. And we got to thank him, to be honest with you. You got to thank him because he saved the tank. He saved going 0-16, which is important at this point. And I'll get into that in a second for all you guys that want to rip me in prime time because I'm responding to you today. So secondly, the, 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 the most ridiculous thing out of all of this is that they ask Adam Gase, why didn't you, you know, you hear the play call, why didn't you stop it? Why didn't you do something about it? I wish I would have called timeout. I wish I would have did this. This is why this head coach is so far in over his head. It's ludicrous at this point. Let's not lose the fact that the drive before the Jets had the ball on offense, how about you get a first down? But the fact that you, the, the game is on the line here, this is the biggest play of the game, and you are not so in tune where you could realize, like, you know what, I don't like that play call. Squash it, timeout, call it off. Like, like, that is your only responsibility. The game is on the line. All quality coaches, you're a step ahead. You're always thinking about, okay, this is what's going on now. What's our next play? Especially when the play before the, the, the uh, losing touchdown pass was the same thing. The guy was open. There's a bad throw. So Adam Gase is so far in his overhead, in over his head. And then when he tries to peach, like, you know what? This isn't, this isn't what we're here for. He's trying, to hold Ad, he's trying to hold Greg Williams accountable. You're firing a defensive coordinator for this gaffe. Are we going to ignore the fact you have the worst offensive football for over a year and a half and nobody's been fired? The offensive line play was dreadful last year. Nobody was fired. Your quarterback's going backwards. Nobody's been fired. Your play call has been terrible. Nobody's been fired. Nothing has changed on offense. It's the worst in football. Nobody's been fired. So don't act like you're trying to instill some culture or leadership here. You're not. It's a joke. So... I mean, to me, I understand people are worried about, well, Gase was able to fire Greg Williams. As an organization, they had to. I still 100% believe that Gase is going to get fired. This was a necessary evil to silence all the critics and to, to silence those people that say the Jets are trying to tank intentionally and they're accepting it. They accept what Greg Williams did. So it all makes sense to me. Now, as for the tanking, and for all you people that took your nice, um, hard-earned time, or well-deserved time, to... Uh, ripped me last night and attacked me for cheering on a Jets loss. And I'm not, apparently that you think I'm not a real fan. I've been a fan since 1995. I've seen it all, been through it all, understand it all, and see, it, it's just, it is what it is. This is the worst team of football. The light at the end of the tunnel for this team is 0-16 or the number one pick. That means 1-15 or 0-16, whatever it is. Right now, you don't want to be tied to the Jacksonville Jaguars who have one win. So you got to continue losing. You want the number one pick for this. You have either Trevor Lawrence or the ability to trade back. It's a ridiculous marketing tool for any new head coach that you'd want. Say, listen, we have the number one pick in the draft. You want to come here? You can help us pick that player, Trevor Lawrence or whoever it is. There, there's so many benefits of having the number one pick, and that is the only way you can get this rebuild started the right way. You have to get the pick. That is the ultimate goal, especially after all these lost, all these lost games, all these lost just bullshit. So this is it. It's not about being a fan. At some point, you got to understand, look at the bigger picture here. The bigger picture is we need to rebuild. We need a new coach. We need a new quarterback. We need new leadership. We need a new culture. We need everything new. How you start with that is the number one pick in the draft because it gives you so many endless opportunities. 
So as for not being a real fan, I don't enjoy lose. I don't enjoy losing. I don't enjoy rooting for losses. I was actively rooting for the Raiders yesterday because I understand what this team needs. We just got to admit it now. We got to understand where we are and where we want to go. And wh what that takes us is, you know, number one pick, losses. And, and even you get Trevor Lawrence. And I understand now everybody's like, well, Trevor Lawrence doesn't guarantee us anything. You're absolutely right. But you know what? You need a franchise quarterback. The hardest position to, you know, find, as we've known for years. Hackenberg, Sanchez, Gino, Chris, uh, Petty, even Darnold now, who's now damaged goods. The hardest position. So now you're getting yourself in position, to, a chance to get him. Furthermore, what you're going to have is a ton of draft picks and a ton, ton of cap space. You have Mims, you have Becton, you have Crowder, you have all these pieces. You get your quarterback, you build around him the right way. You have the quarterback on a rookie contract, and you try to hope this works out. There's no guarantees, but that is your best chance to get this going. You get rid of the coach, Lawrence will come here. So it's not, listen, Lawrence is not a, is not a given, he's not a god, he's not a savior. Nobody's saying be a savior, but he'd be a prominent piece to the puzzle. And then it's up to Joe Douglas to build around him. So for me, all you guys call us not real fans, whatever, I mean, I mean, you can stick whatever you want. We're going to still watch the games. We just keep it real. We're being honest because we know where we are as a team. So I have more notes here. Um, the other story is uh, Bill Cowher being interested. Brumer Sison this morning mentioned that Bill Cowher could possibly be interested in the Jets job. That's what happens when you have a lot of cap space, potentially a number one pick, all these little building blocks going on. So, you know, it's interesting because every time the Jets have a job open, Bill Cowher's name always seems to get linked in. And if I'm being completely honest, the name intrigues me for a variety of reasons. Uh, we go, we always talk about when Bill Parcells came in, he overcame the stench of Rich Kotite and completely cleaned the organization out, brought back credibility, respectability, everything else. Bill Cowher, even though he's been out of league a long time, does that. It's an instant, you have instant credibility. You have instant respect. The media will respect you. The players will respect you. The NFL will respect you. You have instant respect all across the league. Now, yes, he's been at, but he, he's been out of the league, but he's been actively involved. He studies players. He studies film. He's actively involved in the NFL. The thing with him is I like it because he's a, he's a Super Bowl winning coach. He's a CEO kind of coach. So he's going to be there and oversee everything that's going on. Now, what you worry about with Cal is who would be his offensive coordinator? Who would he bring in to develop your Trevor Lawrence or Fields or I mean, maybe even Darnold, but I doubt that. But that is the one thing you worry about. Will he bring in a highly touted staff? You can know for damn sure your defense is going to be tight. It's going to be physical. It's going to be aggressive. But your only concern is who would Cowher bring in? But you would think that he'd be smart to realize that, listen, I have Trevor Lawrence. i got to bring in a, a you know a prominent, aggressive, you know creative offensive coordinator that can help mold my, my quarterback and bring him to the next level. So for me, Bill Cowher is a fascinating candidate. I take him over Harbaugh. I take him over any most other quarterback, or most, most other retread or retread, but other coaches, uh, veteran coaches, including Jim Caldwell, I would take Cower. The thing about him is, will Woody Johnson, who I assume taking the team over, will he pay him the big bucks? How long of a contract will it be? And how long of a commit will Cower make? Will he get? Will he commit to four or five years of this team? Like the thing with Parcells, he came here, but is like you want it. You kind of want a long term solution. So if you go get your Matt Campbell and give him an eight year contract. You hope he's here eight years. How long would Cowher even last? So that's a concern. But for the state of this team, where they're at right now, the bottom cellar dweller, the laughing stock all across, you bring in a Bill Cowher, it could work. Now, it's worked It's worked with John Gruden. It worked with Dick Vermeil. I mean, there are. there is a history of doing it. you got to think if Bill Cowher is going to risk his career, risk his legacy by coming back to the Jets, he's all in. He has a plan. He's a blueprint. And he wants to get to it. So I think it's fascinating. I think it's awesome. Uh, what else do we got here? Cower. I think we covered it all. I think I, I had to write notes. I had so much shit. I never realized how much I cursed, man. My, the, the, the game yesterday made us crazy. But uh, we'll, be, we'll be broadcasting live tonight at 8 o'clock. Uh, as always, feedback is always welcome. Listen, and we got a lot of feedback how we don't call, we don't, um, we don't do play-by-play -play during the videos. And we don't do, like, you know, more analysis. At the end of the day, man, we're just fans. If you want that expert analysis, we're not going to give it to you. We're going to drink some beers and Trulies. We're going to have some, crack some jokes, interact with you guys, and, and just talk about football. So, we, you know, I'm not really sure what you're looking for out of us. This is what we are. And I guess apparently we curse a lot, so we apologize for that sometimes. It's probably too much at times, but that's it. So I'll talk to you guys later. Greg Williams is gone. Hopefully four more games. Adam Gase. Oh, and I one more thing. I forgot about this. This is very, very important. The media 
And this bullshit of how all of a sudden they're attacking Greg Williams. They're like, they're analyzing every play and they're like, oh, he can't do this. They're holding Greg Williams accountable. They, they, put, they pulled that bullshit with Sam, trying to have Sam Darnold call out Greg Williams for it. And after all these weeks, they have never taken Adam Gase to task like they're doing at Greg Williams today. The time management, the game management, the ridiculous play calling, always calling running plays on a first and second down, never featuring receivers. Why is Chris Herndon invisible? All these different things. The media got so exposed with this shit that their, the, their analysis of Greg Williams today, where was that the last 11 weeks of Adam Gase? Where was that? The, the narrative and the, the irony and the bullshit that we're seeing today, just keep an eye on it. You could see who's doing what, who's saying what. Embarrassing. The, the pass that they gave Gase for so long and the, what, the way they're treating Greg Williams today, pathetic. And this is why, the, you know, I understand they need to get clicks. And, they go, and they're thinking that their article is going to the, outrage Jets fans. I can give a shit. I don't, care wh I don't care why Greg Williams did it. I'm happy he did it. So I'm not even reading the articles. But to see the scrutiny they're giving Williams after giving Gase a pass for 10 weeks? Bullshit. Talk to you guys later.